Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we will continue with the Salesforce Developer Interview Question and Answer Series. Today, we will discuss part 12 video where I will be discussing Batch Apex Continuation 2. So in total, this is the third video of Batch Apex. It is a continuation video, video again. Uh, if you have not watched previous videos of this series, then I strongly recommend you to watch those videos first. So let's get started. <laughs> Asynchronous Apex again. Uh, this is the batch Apex Continue 2. The very first question for today is given a scenario, we have to process a batch Apex with 1000 records, with 200 records in each transaction, and the last transaction failed while doing the DML operations. What will happen to, to the processed records? Okay. So let's understand the question a little bit more because this is a scenario based question it could be tricky sometimes so given a scenario we have to process a batch apex with thousand records with 200 records in each transaction what do you mean by that so we have a batch of uh, batch class of uh, thousand records okay and then each batch is having 200 records mean to say we have five batches okay 200 divided by thousand is five batches okay in each transaction and the last transaction failed so there will be five transactions and the last transaction failed while doing the dml operation dml could be anything insert update whatever okay so what will happen to the processed records so it is asking what happened to the first four transactions okay if the last transaction is failed what happened so let's go and understand so if all the first four transactions succeeded but last fails then the database updates made in the first four transactions are not rolled back okay since the batch size is 200 the first four batches will be processed completely so uh, we will have five batches okay so first four will be processed completely and all the data will be committed to the database so so far till here until here all my four batch batches of 200 records each will be processed. I mean to say 800 records will be processed and committed successfully because there were no issues in the first four transactions. Okay. So in the last batch, if we are committing records using normal DML statements like insert update, then the whole batch will roll back. Why I have used the word normal? Uh, I'm not sure if you still remember in the when we were discussing, uh, you know, insert update delete for uh, FX series, this development series, I have explained you there are two types of inserts we can do. One is the normal DMLs, right? Like normal insert, normal update, and long, normal uh, uh, delete. As well as uh, there is another way called database.insert, database.update, database.delete. Okay, if you if you don't remember, just go back to that video and um, and 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 revise it one more time. So what it is saying is in the last batch, if we are committing records using normal DML statements like insert update, then the whole batch will be rolled back. So what happens is in normal, if one fails, everything fails. That is the reason the whole batch will roll back. Okay. So the records from 801 to 1000 will not be processed if we use normal insert update or whatnot. Okay. Moving further, if we use the database DML operations like database.insert with allow all or none as false then the partial commit can happen and only the failed records will not be processed in that batch and rest of all the records will be processed so if i have used in a database.insert it is always safe to use database.insert i mean it depends sometimes you know we if one fails we don't want anything to uh, pass okay so in that scenario you have to use normal update and delete okay it's, nothing is right or wrong over here so you have to take a judgment based on what is your requirement. Okay. So if you want to reprocess everything and you don't, uh, you will not have the, uh, if it is insert and you'll not have the ID or maybe the external key to again, absurd that records, then, you know, use just normal insert. Okay. So that, you know, if it fails, you can reprocess the batch. Okay. But do you know that, okay, you have an external ID key with which you can absurd later on, then you can use, uh, uh, database.insert or database.absert and then uh, later on only process the failed records okay it's all depends on your requirement 
So if we use this database.insert, then what happens is, let, let's suppose from 200 records last, uh, maybe five records failed. So what will happen in the last transaction, the fifth transaction of 200 records, uh, 195 records will be inserted and committed successfully. Only five records which are failed will be failed. Okay. Next, uh, next question is, can we call a future methods from a batch apex? So we have a batch lab apex and then I want to call a future method. So what, what has happened? Is it possible or not possible? Let's see. So no, we cannot call a future method from the batch apex. Straightforward. Don't even try it. Okay. So next question is how to stop or abort a bad job. So there is a batch running and uh, uh, as part of maybe some enhancements, you want to uh, completely stop that job. Okay. Bad job. And then maybe you might have implemented something else. Or maybe that batch is no longer uh, used uh, in, in future. So how to stop that? Okay. So get the ID of the batch job by running a SQL query on async apex job and use the system.abort job job ID to abort the job. It's really easy and straightforward. Okay. What is the apex flex queues? Okay. Uh, normally an org can process five jobs at a time okay and if we add more than five jobs at the time at a time then it goes into apex flex queues okay so salesforce can process five jobs at a time okay and if it is more than that then salesforce creates a queue and it will keep on adding in that queue okay because it cannot reject the badges which are coming in okay let's suppose um, there are five jobs running okay uh, and then sixth came in so Salesforce cannot reject it. Okay, so Salesforce has to store it somewhere. So what it does is it stores in Apex Flex queue. Okay. So let's say we have added 15 jobs at a time, then five jobs will be processed and 20 jobs will go into the Apex Flex queue, as I've explained just now. What is the maximum limit of Apex Flex queue? Now I'm saying that okay, if 20 batches uh, we try to run 20 jobs and then five are processed and 15 is in the queue. So what is the maximum limit of the queue? Like at a time, how much I can run so that, you know, nothing gets rejected. Okay. So there is a limit. So Apex Flex queue can hold up to 100 jobs at a time. Okay. So for example, if I have run at a time 105 job, five will be processing and 100 could be in the Apex Flex queue. Okay. Uh, what would happen if we add, if we added more than 100 jobs? like 125 jobs at a time, what will happen, right? So the first five jobs will be processed and next 100 will be queued and the rest of the 20 jobs will be rejected or not added into the queue, okay? So this will be added. I mean, I am not sure if you could be able to try this, but I've seen this in real time. Uh, if we, uh, if you have a lot of jobs running, okay, then it happens, then the rest of the jobs get uh, rejected and we have to rerun the jobs okay so what will happen uh, what will be the status of the job in the apex flex queue so when it is in the apex flex queue so what will be the status of, of the job right so all the jobs in the apex flex queue will have a status as holding okay can we change the order of already queued bad job let's suppose I have uh, run maybe three to four jobs and it has got into a queue like job one, job two, job three, like three one after other. Okay, can we change? I can I run job three before job two? Let's see. So only jobs having a status as holding can be moved. Means whatever is in flex queue can be uh, moved. All right, but what whatever is getting processed, we cannot do that. We cannot do anything to it. Okay, it can be done you through UI of the Apex Flex queue. Or we can also use apex flex queue method. Okay, so you can write boolean is success equals system dot flex queue dot move before job. You can give uh, job ID here. Move job to move ID. I want to move the job to ID. Uh, move ID uh, second maybe, and then job in queue ID. So you have to give two uh, job IDs, and then automatically it will change the sequence. Okay. How can we schedule a batch apex? This is easy. Okay. Uh, can we, we can schedule a batch apex using a system dot schedule batch method. We can schedule a batch for once at a future time. Okay. Uh, this method 
returns the schedule job id also called as cron trigger id okay so this is this is for uh, for scheduling it for once okay so we can use system dot schedule batch and then the variable of the variable of the class okay i have not declared the class over here that's common okay and then job example maybe you can give the name of the job and then one means it will run after one minute once this is just to run only once okay cron trigger ct is equals to select id times triggered comma next fire time from cron trigger where id is equals to cron id you can see by querying this whether it has been scheduled or not scheduled okay next question is how can we test a batch apex okay so this is a little bit tricky. So when testing a batch apex, we can test only one execution of the execute method. Mean to say, for example, if I have thousand records, then what happens is it it execute runs five times because it divides. Let's suppose two hundred records at a time, so it divides, and then we got five different transaction. Okay, but when testing batch apex, we can test only one execution of the execute method. So use the scope parameter of the execute batch method to limit the number of records passed into the execute method to ensure that we aren't running into governor limits okay so use the test method start test and stop test around the execute batch okay before and after uh, the logic you have to use start test and stop test okay around the execute batch method to ensure that it finishes before continuing the test so all the asynchronous calls made after the start test methods are collected by the system. When stop, tem, uh, stop test is executed, uh, all the asynchronous processes are run asyn uh, synchronously. Okay. So as soon as stop test is run, all the asynchronous processes are run synchronously. Okay. Uh, if you have not uh, sure about what is start and uh, start test and stop test, we have discussed this in the testing. Uh, uh, in the testing uh, video so just go ahead and uh, uh, you know refresh the start test and uh, stop test okay if you don't include the execute batch method within the start test and stop test methods the the batch job executes at the end of the test method okay so it is very important to use the start test and stop test and then in, in between call the uh, call the execute method okay then only you will be able to test the batch effects. Try this, okay? Until and unless you try this one, right? This type of question, you will not understand clearly, okay? So that's all for this one. I think batch effects, all the questions in the batch effects are covered. And um, I have used, uh, again, references help out salesforce.com as well as the trial has to get, get, you, the, uh, get you the latest uh, questions. And, and thank you. Thank you for watching. I hope this video helped you prepare for your Salesforce developer interview questions and crack your next job. Thank you.